to take off. Good to go there. Okay. We have to call tower, so right, we'll so get we'll ready on the radios. The so we switch. Okay. Here we don't talk over anybody. And, then, and oh, we'll, we'll be a dry run. You want to yeah. dive right in? Let me do a dry run if that's all right. <laughs> okay. We have Concord Tower, Diamond Star 526, Delta are ready for takeoff. I tell them we are. We're holding short of two. Holding short of two. And they already know our direction of flight, and they right. already know we have Romeo. Right. I'm passing right. that to them. Huh? Both come back, say, uh, they say, hold short, for takeoff, we're cleared for takeoff, right turn out approved, and something just say, uh, Cleared for takeoff, right turn. Whatever they say. So if they yeah. say cleared for takeoff on two right turn out, you would just repeat cleared for takeoff on two right turn out. Five two six Delta Sierra. Okay. Concord Tower, Diamond Star five two six, Delta Sierra, hold, holding short runway two. Diamond Star five two six, Delta Sierra, Concord runway two, cleared for takeoff on course. Runway two, cleared for takeoff on course. Uh, five two six, Delta Sierra. Okay, that was good. The only thing you didn't tell him was you were ready to go. Oh, fair. <laughs> okay, All right. he got the point. All right, so. All right, so you can dump. on the ground. Yeah, you can dump your checklist. Store that somewhere. All right, oh, oh, oh. Hand on the stick. Remember, we want a little bit of left aileron. All right, there we go. Tools on the ground, a little bit of left aileron. Okay. Right, let's get her over here in the center. There you go. A little more to the center. I'm pushing on the right rudder, giving you a little more right rudder. Yep. All right, now she's starting to come back. We'll keep that right rudder even more, though. See how she's still uh, I see that. There yeah. you go. And there's a rotate. All right, keep that. Keep those wings level. There you go. That was me. Yep. We just want to pull that stick straight back. Keep her nose up. Yeah, yeah, Remember, yeah, we want to climb yep. to 67. All right. There we go. But we're going to keep positive rate, right, so you're going to keep that stick going up. Don't let her come down on you. Uh oh, uh oh, don't let that distract you. Yep. We're gonna fly the plane, we'll deal with the camera later. Let's keep those wings level, we wanna fly runway heading. Don't over control. Okay. Nice little movements will do it. We're gonna keep her climbing. I'm kinda of just steadying you out there. All right, so we're at 1300 feet, we can pull our flaps up. All right. Okay. All right, and, uh, now we're at the end of the runway. So yeah, you can pull RPMs back, back to 24. All right, we're gonna start our turnout. Okay. And RPMs can wait a minute if something gotcha. else needs to be done. Okay. So now we'll keep our speed about 80. Altitude. And keep your turn going. We're gonna turn all the way back, okay. see where our course is. Yep. And we're gonna keep an eye on that tower out there. I see that, yes. So keep your climb going and your turn going be a little bumpy here because it's windy. All right, you're doing good on staying court. I keep this turn going. See how that tower's right there? I see that. We got to keep it turning. Yep. Oh, there you go. It's just nice, easy, two over control. This plane is very responsive. Okay. And that camera fall is actually a good thing. When you're in takeoff landing, anything Everything else doesn't matter. Oh, right. Something happens, forget about it. Just Leaving Push altitude. it aside. We can deal with it later. Okay. Always fly the plane first. All right, so 3,000, yep, nose are down, keep, keep her at three. All right, now simultaneously what we can do is let's pull our power back, our manifold, keep her level. I see that, yep. Back to like 23 inches. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, it always wants to climb, so let's roll our trim wheel forward a little bit. Take that tendency away. And so if we let, now see, now we're diving at 1,400 feet. If you let your hand off the stick, where does she want to go? Gotcha. And she's back to climbing, so yeah, roll a so little so more in there. So, that was an eventful takeoff. <laughs> sure. Um, so I didn't even do an intro. This is Luke. I hate it. Um, I've flown with Luke on a discovery flight. He's had one lesson with another instructor. So he's still getting used to the plane. And it's a little bumpy today. We've got, uh, what do we have, like 18 knot winds on takeoff. Um, but as we saw, this camera fell down. A couple things did uh, were different. Forget all of them. We'll just make the plane take off, keep her where we want to go. We can come back. Even with stuff like leaning and flaps and fuel pump, you know, if you wreck the plane, none of that matters, right? Sure. So clearly we're going to go with that first. All right, so what we're going to do now is work on our straight and level and following your course. All right. As you can see, we're yeah, going about 45 again. degrees right, of course. 
Uh, you're almost within 100 of your altitude, and it will be hard to hold out to. It's a little bumpy today. So if we're flying somewhere, like we are today, if I know that I'm established on my course line, what you can do is just pick out a spot in the distance, sure. and fly to that, and look at that spot. Like there's kind of a brown patch out there, or whatever. And, See that? And then when you get to it, just double check and make sure instead of having to look down here at right. instruments every yeah. two seconds. Yeah. Um, and altitude is kind of the same thing. You can use the horizon line, and you will too get to the point too where you kind of feel if she's going down or going up. Like last time we flew, just the idea of getting eyes outside the cockpit helps me not uh, over control as you were talking. Yeah, That's I, the key is start to try to fly this, it's far more difficult than... That's right. Uh, and I did look at the weather, I knew it was windy, I knew it might be bumpy, um, but unless it's hazardous, I can't see any reason to scrub the flight. Definitely not. Um, at some point you may have to fly in this stuff, right? So why not get used to it? Yeah. Um, so the big thing we looked at, or I looked at, was the wind direction um, in the runway that we're going to be landing on. A max demonstrated crosswind on this plane is 20 knots. So that means a test pilot flew this plane with a 20 knot uh, crosswind and landed it and was was did okay. Land it in any more than a 20 knot crosswind, you are now the test pilot and you're going to see if it if it goes. Um, I don't like to land in a 20 knot crosswind. 17, 18 is about as much as I care to deal with. Um, but today it's at 350. The runway is 20. So basically it's about 30 degrees off the runway. So that's not a terrible crosswind. I'm not saying it won't be bumpy coming in, but um, you don't have to go straight to your course. If you want to do you know, a turn or something, just kind of get your bearings about what's going on. Because what, you know, what being a pilot is about is you flying the plane, not the plane flying you. And part of the way you do that is not with instruments or looking outside, but seat of the pants, and feeling what the plane is telling you. Um, so you, you, in order to know what to look for, you got to do it. The, only, the one thing I saw on takeoff is I pushed right rudder, and anytime I let off a right rudder, it kind of kept going back to the left. Wasn't there with you on the right rudder, so yeah. Hey, why don't you, uh, let's do a climb to 4,000 feet. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to ease the power in full power, and ease the stick back, and we're going to try to go about 500 feet a minute. All right. On our, on our vertical speed. So see, she just took off like a rocket. Um, the other way you can look at it too is 95 knots. Okay. If you go 95 knots, generally that's going to give you the, the climb you want. We'll have to be on the lookout for traffic, but what I'm thinking is if we get a little higher, it might get a little smoother. I got you. I think too is if we do any air work, yeah. uh, you have a floor, an air work, 1500 AGL. Right. And if our elevation here is about 700, so that means 2200 is kind of our cutoff for any air work. We're at 3000, doesn't give us a lot of room to right. work with. There you go, perfect. You're doing 600 feet a minute, 550, that's fine. Now it's going faster than I said, so so be it, that's fine. Perfect. I think she already feels a little smoother. Uh, you can't see it that much today, but especially during the summer, you'll see like a haze layer. Okay. And it's always bumpy in the haze layer. Okay. If you up above it, it's smoother. Okay. Same thing with cumulus clouds. Generally, under a cumulus cloud is bumpy, over top is smooth. Stratus, okay. not so much. That's okay. Okay, so 4,000 worked. It's much smoother up here. We do have to be a little more careful because uh, 3,000 and below, you can pretty much do whatever you want. 4,000, there might be people more coming around. Okay. Right. Uh, but we do have ADSB and it's bumpy, so we're really the only dumb skulls out here <laughs> doing this <laughs> <Sure>. today. <laughs> All right, so are you familiar with a standard rate turn, half standard rate turn? So. Yes, um, it's the number of seconds per 360 degrees. Right. Two minutes for 360 degrees. Is right. So on this plane, we don't have the little airplane with the ball. Right. We have a little magenta line that will shoot out from the heading. Okay. And you can see there's a big line there, and there's a little, like, see it over here, there's a little line there. And I'm putting my fingers on the screen, which I try not that. to do. But when you, so, so start turning one way or the other. Try to hold 4,000, you'll need a little back pressure. Just nice and easy. All right, see how that line shot out? I see that. If that line, that pink line is on that, that's a standard rate turn. Okay. Let's see if we can do a 360 standard rate turn and hold our altitude. You did right. So you kind of got it set, then you got your eyes out. And just check it every once in a while. And you can see how there's a little bit of back pressure you need because you've traded some of your, your lift for the, or your vertical lift for horizontal lift. Oh yeah, that extra thousand feet made all the difference. It's a lot of difference. Look at yeah. this direction. So you see what I'm talking about? I that see haze that, layer? Yeah. yeah. Anytime you can get above that, it's going to be smoother. Okay. I don't, did we have the heading bug set or did you know what heading you were on when we came Yeah, on? I did not notice okay. it. <laughs> well, 
we were headed towards Anson, so right. you're, you're probably 90 degrees off your turn. The private check ride, it's all within 100 feet of altitude. 100 plus or minus, right. So we try to stay right even on. less than that, yeah. right. Um, and even then, if you accidentally get outside the 100, if they see you instantly recognize it and correct gotcha. it, yep. a lot of times they'll let it go. If all of a sudden you're 200 off altitude, and you're just you know blasting I'm away and not changing, it, yeah. that's probably going to be an issue. All right, so anytime anyone asks you to do an air work maneuver, yes. first question out of your mouth is going to be, what do you think? Uh, clearing turn, sir. You want me to do a clearing turn. Yeah. Usually on the first maneuver, you would just do the clearing turn. But on like a check ride, if you're kind of doing like we're doing, we kind of basically just did a clearing. I know we're good. Um, I would ask. But the first one I say, all right, I'm going to do a clearing turn. All right, so as we're turning, say we'll pick out a heading, say south. Do south. How's that? That's good. Um, so you go ahead and center up your heading bug by just pushing the heading button. Which is right. right either there or there. Both the screens have the same controls. All right, so we want to enter this maneuver um, at maneuvering speed. Got it. So maneuvering speed, we, we talked it. about earlier, is about 100 knots. So you can start pulling your power back. And if you were doing a clearing turn, that's a good time to start slowing down right there. You pull your power, you slow down. Once we get her down to 100, we'll see whatever our manifold pressure is to kind of hold that. And then when you start into the turn, I find about 22 inches works with well. okay. people. So just to recap, so we're going to do 45 degrees, which is that line, the little one between the two big ones. Got it. We'll just do one. One circle, unless you're Revolution. really feeling cocky, you want to come out sure. of it and go the other way. Sure. And we're trying to maintain our 4,000. And the big thing, big takeaway is it's going to take a bunch of back pressure. If you want to roll some trim in, you can. I usually just do it without. Got it. Um, and if you get to the point where you're putting back pressure in and like the stall horn screaming or she just doesn't go, we'll take a little bit of the bank out and kind of get back. Uh, but that horizon line, which you can see real clear today, is going to be your best friend. Once you get into your bank like you want it, you can pick out a relation between the horizon line and something on the cowling. Got it. Um, that's going to be your friend. All right. And we'll get our All right. So speed is good. Twenty inches is, is fine. Okay. Yep. Heading bug's good. So All we'll right. just do one turn either direction and roll her out on this head. We'll go left first, and we'll end on south. All right. So here we go. So remember, you want to start pushing some power in now, about twenty-two inches. Trying to stay outside as much as I can. Oh. Yep. So I, I've got a spot right here in the corner with the horizon line yep. that I'm watching. I just glance down every once in a while just to see where we are in the turn. Double check. Okay. Right, so your rollout was a little bit late. And we and I'm you like let her crazy balloon. Because right. I let my, my power didn't right. come back when I ended up. Uh, not just your power, your stick. Because remember, okay, yeah, fair enough. all that lift that was pushing in a circle, once you level out, now it wants to push you up. up. So you're going to yep. have to stick for Because you were right at about 4,100. So you were right at the borderline, the borderline yeah, of being in spec, and all of a sudden she went balloon. All right, let's talk slow flight. Okay. And we'll use slow flight to uh, work on stalls also. Okay. So what we're going to do with slow flight is basically we're going to fly the plane just above the stall horn. Okay. So sure. in this plane, you're probably going to be about 59, 58, something like that. Uh, stall full dirty configuration is about 49. So right. we have a little room there. We're going to use our pitch to control our speed. Okay. We're going to use our power to control our altitude. This is very similar to what you would do on approach to landing, yeah. except yep. we're going to be doing it level. Got it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a heading. We're just going to start slowing the plane down. And when you get to flap speed, the first one is 108, and the second one is 91, you'll put your flaps and we're going to do it full, right. full dirty is what that's known as. Got it. Uh, if we had retractable gear, we'd be throwing the gear down, but we don't. And again, you want your inputs to be very small and very controlled because we're flying slow, right? And we don't want to put her into a stall. That stall speed that I just quoted, 49, is in level flight. Yeah. You put a bank in there, it starts going up. Makes sense. So we want to so stay on heading, yep. and we want to stay we on out. Right, so we're just going to keep her slowing down until we hear that stall horn. It's the stall horn. Okay. All right, so right about 60. So I want you to hold this heading, this altitude, and this airspeed. Remember, your, yeah, your power's altitude, so you lopped a little bit. Now your airspeed's going up a little bit. So I can right, drop see, a little and bit. And you can see how they work together, right? Yep. If I pull up, I get my airspeed down, I get my altitude. And you're operating on what's known, if you draw the graph, it's called the back, back side, side of, of the power curve. Exactly. Okay. I'm telling you, you're more well-read than I am on this I stuff. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a little bit opposite of how we're, we're controlling speed and altitude. You would think I'm going to control altitude with the stick, but you're not. Right. All right, so what I want you to do now is make a 90-degree turn to the right. So I'll, okay. I'll just do your heading bug. We'll just yep. go west. Okay. I want you to do a very little bank and very slowly just nurse her around because we don't want to shoot that uh, stall speed way up. Got it. All right, there's your heading. 
Okay, and I'm looking in front of us. There's no airspace. There's no plane. So Fair now enough. what we're going to do, and I'll do it with you. We can do it together. Sure. We're going to turn this into a power off stall. So what we're going to do is don't do it till we till we talk through the whole thing. Oh. We're going to pull the power back to idle. Goes down to build airspeed to 75. Which is approach speed. Right. And then we're going to start pulling back on the stick. And in this plane, the best method is to keep continually pulling back until she breaks. Not okay. at a high rate. Sure. Don't want to just jerk it back. But if you just pull it back and stop, she may just sit in the buffet. Because that's okay. what you're going to get. You're going to get a buffet, bushy controls. Okay. And we're going to use the rudder to control our distance or our direction. We're going to try not to do any aileron because that could put us into a spin. Got it. One. Okay, so I'm on the controls. I'm going to let you do it. I'm just going to be here with you. Absolutely. All right, so let's power down. All right, put your nose down. All right, and right about there. And let's let her build to 75, okay? Just start that. bringing her back up. Oh, she's going a little bit left, so put a little right rudder. Keep that aileron centered. Okay. And there's the brake, so, so all right, so power put up. power, right, so we always want to keep the hand on the throttle during those moves. I got you, yep. And we're going to nose down, but we're not going to let her dive. Okay. We want to okay. lose as little out, let her build speed. All right, just build her back up to 65. Just pull power back. We'll do another one of those, okay. don't do it. What we're simulating here is we're coming in for a landing, we right. stalled it. Right. So we don't want to so let her dive, dive right? right? So we want to bring that nose down, but full power, so anytime you're doing a move or that hand stays on that because but i did so. feel some aileron she, you started putting some right up yeah so i want you to keep rudder. that straight it's all right yeah. yep. all right there you go okay all right we'll pull some more and there she goes okay nose down yeah there you go full power full power full power, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah full yeah. power I right, keep her on heading. See how we lost our heading Absolutely, there? Absolutely, yep. Yeah, it's full power when you recover. There's no there's no, no in nursing. Between. We go full. Go, yeah. Yeah. This is an emergency, basically, right? Yeah. Okay, now I can pitch her down. Hand on that throttle, please. That's right, yep. I'm going to tape your hand to that <laughs> throttle. Those wings level and pull her right up. All rudder. Hey, okay, there's the brake. Full power. Keep her level, use that rudder. Uh, don't use that aileron yet. Okay. And don't nose up on me. Don't climb. Okay. It just level her off till you build your speed. Got it. All right. Now as our speed builds, we can start cleaning up. Okay. Don't climb on me. If, if we were in a climb installed, we could go back to maintain the climb. But I want you to get your speed up, up before you start doing it. Otherwise, you can throw it into a secondary stall. Fair enough. Yep. That was fine. See how the nose wants to drop? You pulled it back. That was fine. Um, you went on the ailerons a little early. Was the only thing. Okay. But other than that, that was that was a market improvement from the first one. So really, on three, you came out. Okay. All right. So a power on stall is going to be the same principle, okay. except we're going to have power. Sure. Just going to pull her back. We're going to use the rudders. When she breaks, if she breaks, sometimes she won't break. Basically, we're just going to stick down. Okay. Okay. We're going to do it at full power. And the principle is the same. So I'm going to give you a heading. Uh, we're fine on this heading. Same thing. Keep the wings level. Now we're going to use rudder to uh, control it because it is still a stall. And right. just start easing her up. And we want to be careful we don't over get back too far. If we start seeing any chevrons or anything on our uh, G1000, we'll stop pulling back. Ah, use the rudder. That's good. All right, there's a little buffet. I don't think she's going to break today. All right, stick forward. Got to stick forward. You felt the buffet, heard the horn. If she does break, it's not as dramatic as the power off. Sure. It just kind just of drops lays a little it down. Bit. Okay. Right, but that was good. You used your rudder. You stayed basically on course. You got a few degrees okay. off, but that's fine. But I felt you using the rudder. I was on the right rudder. Keeping that nose. Because yep. you know, if the plane starts to loaf off, say, to the left, uh, we're going to push opposite rudder in to shove that tail under there. Makes sense. Right? We don't yep. want it. We, you know, if we do aileron, that's going to screw up our, our drag and sure. throw us into a spin. All right. So for, let me just give you a little yeah. trimmer on, on spins. Uh, for a private, you don't do spins. This plane is not spin rated. Yes. But should you ever get yourself into a spin? Can I try to talk through the checklist first and have sure. you, is sure. that good learning? Yep. Um, so it's uh, power to idle. Uh, Constant neutral, full opposite uh, rudder, and then um, elevator forward initially, and after the spin is arrested, then 
elevator back. Perfect. That's perfect. Um, and it happens kind of quick. Sure. You get into it. Um, but yeah, you got that uh, initial reaction to not, again, not use L, not use aileron and use run. That was perfect. Okay. All right. When are you taking your CFI? Huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm studying for the ground instructor test. It's <laughs> been a fun way to keep in the books and learn. So I like having a test to be prepared for is something I've learned about myself. Wind three six zero at one four gust one eight. So uh oh, engine just quit. Oh, we're sinking like a rock now, aren't we?